Welcome to this presentation of Adjusting the Donjin Channel Settings. This is the Specialist Trading Weekly Stock Review for the week ending June 17, 2011. Now from time to time we get questions from members asking which is the proper Donchin Channel setting to use and we're going to show you how to adjust them properly. But before we begin, as always, we ask that you please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you the performance results from this week's signals as well as how to adjust the Donchin channels. But remember, we can in no way guarantee that any of these results will be repeated in the future. So please take a moment to view our disclaimer and then we shall begin this week's stock review. Now I'd like to start off this week with an email that was received from a member and this goes into how we're going to explain how to use the Donchin channels. It starts off by saying, Steve, on this morning's list, SUN Sun is identified as a potential short via strategy number one. I don't see how this stock qualifies. The rule states to look to sell when declining price bars first begin to rise and then eventually touch the midline of the declining Donchin channel. But the setup bar was declining and not increasing and the first touch of the midline was several bars ago. This is a, a great question and we receive this as I said from time to time so I really want to clarify it once more. First of all let's look at the stock that was in question. This is Sun, S-U-N. Now as always with all of our strategies and methods the first thing we do is we ask ourselves where is price in relation to the buy sell line. Obviously price is below so we're only looking to go short Sun. Okay. This is the only environment we can look at Sun and that's from shorting it or selling it. Now we add our structure if we're deciding to use strategy number one we add the Donchin channels and this is exactly what this member saw. Once they added the Donchin channels they're looking for the proper setup bar. Now this was the day and the bar that we identified as the setup bar and it's you know easy to see why the student was confused because first of all we're below the buy sell line but the Donchin channels are rising here. Remember we're looking for the Donchin channels also to be declining and then we're looking for price to rise and hit the midline and as the, the member said we had already touched the midline several bars ago so they're really confused. Now here's the root of the confusion. What this student was looking at were the 14 period Donchin channels and to no fault of their own because in the beginning uh, text of, of my book as well as on the website I go into detail using strategy number one using the 14 period setting. Okay. Since then we have changed the standard setting to a 21 period setting. Now once we change it to a 21 period setting you can see now that once again we're below the buy sell line. All the Donchin channels are headed in a downward progression and this one coming from an upward place so it's coming down. We see price rise. Price is touching and straddling the midline and then we have a bar that is completely above. So this was our proper setup bar. So once we change the setting do you see how things come into focus and come into play. Now the question arises, well, well, what makes you decide to use a 21 as opposed to a 14? Do we just keep on changing things until we see a valid signal? No, that would be, you know, uh, curve fitting and we would just look, be looking at things to, to meet our requirements. That's not what we're doing. So let me go into detail here how to adjust the settings, okay? Here are the Donchin Channel setting rules. And remember, we use the settings in increments of seven. So we're not going to be going from a 14, 15, 16, 17 up, you know, up the uh, ladder here, uh, each increment of the uh, Donchin channels. We're going to use them only in increments of seven, seven, 14, 21, 28, and so on. Now, in, in environments of high volatility, this is where the markets are really moving. There's large ranges on the stock. The market, if you look at the industrial average or the S&P indexes, have large, large moves uh, per daily bar chart. Well, this is where we have high volatility. We want to decrease the setting. So we're going anywhere from a 21 period down to a 14, even down to a 7 period Donchin channel setting. Okay. In periods of low volatility, where this happens many times in the summer months or even uh, during the holidays where there's not much movement at all, we decrease or we can decrease or I should say that the volatility has decreased, it's low volatility, so we increase the setting. Right? We'll go from a 21 period to a 28 to a 35 and so on. Okay? Now when the markets are pretty much just behaving normally, there's not too much low or as opposed to high volatility, we're pretty much in line, we just use our standard setting of 21 period. It was my mistake that when I originally 
uh, gave the rules and, and constructed the video for the Dodging Channel, uh, the markets were in high volatility period, so we had decreased settings of 14. Since then, things have, have balanced out and, and we've pretty much uh, gained the stability, so we're using the standard 21 period. Now, if uh, we get into summer, as we're going into summer, and we get into the months of uh, July and, and uh, August, and there's really nothing happening in the market, we can experience low volatility at those times, so we will increase the settings uh, by warning you or by telling you we're increasing them, probably to a 28 period or even a 35 period dodging channel. Okay, so you understand how this works. But beyond that, the standard setting, as long as the markets are behaving normally, the standard setting is a 21 period. And that's the way we will be issuing our signals on a nightly basis using strategy number one, unless we notify you that we've changed the setting because of the volatility. Okay, I hope this makes sense and I hope this explains everything well and clear to all of our members. Okay, now let's start off by looking at the stock positions that were initiated and closed out this week. We didn't have a lot of trades this week because even though the market really fell out of bed this week and we had a, a really strong downside to the market, there was one or two days where we gapped up very strongly or we opened up, which kind of really messed up the flow of a lot of stocks. So we weren't able to get as many signals as we usually do. But all of our signals were to the short side. Some of them worked out, some didn't. We'll show you exactly how they did or did not work out. Our first one was in Sun. This was the, the uh, stock in question that the member asked about. This was a strategy number one, sell short signal. We went short on the 13th, which was Monday of this week, and at 40.34, and we covered it at the exact same price. So we broke even. Let's show you why. All right, here's with the proper setting. We, all, we went over all of the rules so far, and here is our proper setup bar stating that we can go short if we trade one tick below on the next day. Well, here's where we went one tick below on the next day. So we shorted the stock at 40.34. And our exit, or, well, first I should say we place our stop above the highest high of the rally. Now, this is the rally right here, the bounce. So remember, students get mixed up and they'll put their stop right here or maybe right here. You place your stop above the highest portion of that little bounce prior to entry. And then as we get closer to our exit level, which is right here, once we touch the lower daunting channel, we have the option to move our stop to unchange, just to protect ourselves. Well, as you can see, the day we got short, things were going great. We actually uh, were thinking we were going to cover the very next day. But guess what? The very next day, we gapped up. This is where I said we had these kind of fits and starts this week. We gapped up, and we got stopped out unchanged at 40.34, because this is where we moved our stop down to. Now, had we decided to trade more aggressively and not used the more conservative rule of moving our stop to unchanged, we would have remained in the trade, kept our stop up here, and ultimately we would have covered today, in fact, at 38.71 for nearly two-point gain. So it all depends, as I always say, these are strategies, that are, these are not systems. If these were systems, everyone would have to trade the same way each and every signal. But because they're strategies, we give you different options to trade conservatively or aggressively. You can move your stop to unchange. You can leave it where it is. You can uh, you know, decide to move your stop in different places. You can uh, get out at different exits. Here, had we stayed in, we would have had a winning trade, but we just broke even. Our next signal was in letter A. This was strategy number four, our most common strategy. We went short once again on Monday the 13th at 48.12. This one worked out perfectly. We covered the exact same day at 47.32. So we made a little over three quarters of a point in this stock in one day. First question we ask ourselves, where is price in relation to the buy sell line? And this is where a lot of students have difficulty because they say, well, Steve, first of all, the buy sell line is rising. And I know you've stated before that if the buy sell line is rising, the stock is pretty much going to still have some upward momentum to it. And then secondly, we're above the buy-sell line, we're below, and then we're back up above. So how can you get a shorting signal out of this? Remember, if we break the rule down of the buy-sell line down to its, you know, its most common denominator, it really states that if you're going short, you must enter below the buy-sell line. Price must be entered below the buy-sell line. If you're going long, your entry price must be above the buy-sell line. Now we have a valid setup bar right here circled in blue. And where would our entry be? Below the buy sell line. So this is a valid setup to go short using strategy number four. We entered short at 48.12. Here's where our stop placement is for stop placement number one. Here's for stop placement number two. The great thing about strategy number four is 
You usually find out within one to three days if you're right or wrong. We found out the very same day, here's our calculated exit level at 47.32. Remember, this is a fixed exit. We always know where we're going to get out, unlike strategy number one and strategy number three. We exited at 47.32, covered our short the very same day. Now, had we stayed in the trade, if we tried to squeeze out some more gains, look what would have happened. We would have got stopped out at both these stop levels. So this is an instance of where it worked out on our favor by trading more conservatively and getting out at the standard exit. Now our next trade was in SLB Schlumberger, strategy number four. Once again, we went short on the 13th and this one we got uh, stopped out with a loss. We exited on the 14th the very next day for a little over three quarters of a point, 77 cent loss. Now this once again is a perfect example of how two or three people can trade the same signal and end up with different results. This is clearly below the buy sell line, price is below, so we're going short and we have our valid setup bar. Out of all these bars, this is the only one that is a valid setup bar to go short using strategy number four. So we entered short once we traded one tick below at 83.56. Here's our conservative stop placement at stop placement number one. Here's our aggressive stop placement at stop placement number two. After we calculate those stop placements and decide which one we're going to use, then we simply calculate our exit level and that came out to 81.62. So you have to simply just place an open order to uh, exit if you're wrong at your stop and an open order to cover if you're right. And then you just sit back and wait and just manage the trade. Now once again, as you can see, we entered at 83.56. Look what happened on that day. I think we came about five ticks away from covering and having uh, about a two point profit in one day. But look what happened. We got nearly there and we bounced back up. So we moved our stop down to unchanged at 83.56. Now guess what? The next day we gapped up higher than where our stop was. So we actually covered our position on the opening at 84.33. So we actually lost because we had a gap opening. Now had we elected not to move our stop to unchanged, we would have continued to leave it here at stop placement number one. And if we were really an aggressive trader, we would have continued to keep it here at stop placement number two never even employing stop placement number one, we'd be up here at stop placement number two. And that would have been the right thing to do in this particular trade because guess what? Right after we got stopped out the next day, it headed back in its direction. And yesterday, Thursday, we would have covered with a nearly two point gain. So we came out with a loss when we were trying to break even because we were being conservative. Had we been more aggressive, we would have had nearly a two point gain. So some of our, our aggressive traders actually made money on this trade. And then our last trade of the week was in COP, COP. We went short once again using strategy number four on the 13th on Monday at 71.39. We covered the same day, 70.34, made a little over a point, a point and five cents. Now we are clearly below the buy sell line here. So this is perfect for going short. Here's our setup bar. Here's the only bar to go short. So we simply entered once we traded one tick below and covered at 7034. Here was our fixed exit. And look at how it's it's really amazing how, you know, the rules uh, to our exit levels are so defined. And do you see how we get right to those levels many times and then simply change direction? Look at what happened the very next day. We gapped up. So that is why we when we trade strategy number four, we're, we're very conservative. We don't like to stay in longer. We, we use our exit level as for simply covering all of our shorts or exiting all of our longs. And we use conservative stop placement number one. Now, this is the way we trade it. It's up to you to decide how you want to trade it and what works best for you. All right, so let's recap. It was a quiet week. We only had four trades. Out of all those four trades, all of them were short signals. Now, we only had two winners and one loser and one break even. We made just a little over one point for all our effort this week. And had we traded a little more aggressively in another, we would have made closer to three points, but we stayed conservative, so we came out with only a point gain. But think of what we did this week. I believe at one point the market was down uh, close to 300 points for the week. And I know a lot of traders were left holding the bag and had very you know large losses. We came out with a gain this week, albeit a small gain, but it was still a gain. So ask yourself, this is the measure of consistency that you're looking for. Think back in your past before you became a member of specialist trading, how you would have done in markets like this. Most likely, you would have uh, at best broken even. We're still making some gains, some nice profits. Because many times, you know, traders get caught off guard when the market all of a sudden decides to turn direction and they don't know why things are not working anymore. 
You know, it's easy to make money when the market's going in your direction, but the minute the market changes environment, if you're not, you know, able to listen to the market, which is what I really teach, well then you're going to be, you know, swimming upstream and that's why that, that generates losses. So listen to what the market's saying. The only way to do that is to learn these strategies and then once you learn them, paper trade them. I showed you different examples of how you can trade aggressively and conservatively. Our edge here is consistency. Some weeks we may break even, some weeks we may have a small gain as you've seen here. And in the past couple of weeks you've seen where we made, you know, 8, 10, 15 points in one week. There are also maybe weeks where you'll see we'll make small minor losses. But over the long haul we'll have this nice upward consistent approach to our trading. Now if you have any questions concerning what I went over, concerning the daunting channel settings, or anything else on our website with all of our numerous strategies, please do not hesitate to email me at stephenprimo at specialisttrading.com. In closing, I ask that you take one last look at our disclaimer. I showed you the performance results from this past week's trades, as well as how to properly adjust the daunting channels. But remember, we can in no way guarantee that any of these results will be repeated in the future. Remember to email if you have any questions. We'll use this in the weekly webinars if you don't mind me talking about your question the way we did about this particular student's one today. If not, have a pleasant, enjoyable weekend, and we'll see you here right back next week. Bye-bye.